I should be writing number 377. We're going to call this one Brain Weasels. Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And I want to apologize for missing last week's uh, episode. I've been really on the ball for a couple of months now. But uh, went on vacation, and I had to do a whole bunch of things to get ready for vacation. Unfortunately, podcasting was one of the ones that did not get done. So um, there's a new Ditch Diggers available today, and this should be going up shortly after. I'm going to break my uh, my usual schedule and just give uh, try to get back on track. Ditch Diggers this week. I should be writing next week. And then back on schedule. So I've been dealing with brain weasels lately. And you might laugh at me. In fact, you should laugh at me. But essentially, it's a lot easier to... um, It's a lot easier to give advice than take it. And I think everybody knows that. Admittedly, it's hard for me to talk about this because um, I'm, I'm not good at talking about my actual skills. But um, if you've done any study of of childhood development, recently it's come out that gifted children who were treated differently and got more attention and told they were smart when they were children, there's a downside to that. And that's if something, something has come easy to them so often that when something's hard, they figure something's wrong. Because they don't know how to attack problems, they kind of let it go. My grades reflected this in college. I was excellent at anything involving the written word. English, writing, whatever. A's. All across the board. Uh, If I wasn't as interested or it proved more of a challenge i was more of a c and b student and i notice even today if something goes wrong it my, my first reaction is oh the world is ending i can't fix this this is terrible not all right so what went wrong what can we do to fix it if it's my fault if it's anybody else's fault, then sure, I can think logically and think, okay, well, let's move forward and think. And But no, if it's me, it's just like, oh, God, I've screwed it up, and there's no fixing it, and it's terrible. And the funniest thing is, the on- I only recently realized this is what was going on in my head. So I would break something and think it was over. And this goes back to fiction, where I would, you know, I'm working on a couple of proposals with my agent, and I send her my proposal, and she sends back, I don't think this part works, or I don't think this part works. And my first thought is, well, clearly I shouldn't work on this book because it sucks. And I know my longtime listeners are back there going, but you say it's okay to suck at writing. You said it. I know I said it. It's just hard to internalize because I still have this, you know, like I said, it's hard for me to say, but I'll be honest. When I was a kid and I would write something, I would often get, oh, this is awesome. And only later did I get critiqued. Now, I'm not saying you should critique your seven-year-old, but I'm saying that I learned that perfect the first time was a possibility. And I was wrong. But you know, the the lessons you learn when you're a kid, they stick with you. I've learned many, 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 many more times as an adult that that was incorrect. But that didn't stop me from uh, still thinking internally, you know, your your, your lizard brain. I'm not sitting here going, clearly saying, well, I'm not going to work on this book because my agent didn't like this aspect. My first emotional thought this wash of emotion is oh it sucks i've wasted my time i've wasted my agent's time she's going to dump me any moment now instead of maybe i should just work on this thing she suggested i work on and make the book better now granted i have worked through proposals a number of times with her and then we both just decided to trunk the novel 
that happens. And it hurts. But you have to decide how long, especially if you're a working writer, how long you're going to beat on this topic before you decide, this is better for my career if I just move on, if I don't do this anymore. And I've actually started to think to myself whenever something goes wrong, either in writing or without, okay, so something went wrong. It's possible that with clear thinking and hard work, I can fix this. And stopping myself and thinking clearly, this phrase is actually helping. It's actually pushing me forward to get done what I need to get done. And sometimes fixing the problem. So I'm going to be fixing the problem on my new novel that my agent wants. I'll go ahead and tell you, it's really funny. I have a terrible secret that the antagonist is hiding, and it will be revealed in probably the first half of the book, because the story's not about the secret. The story's about the, the, whether the protagonist needs to cover it up or uh, reveal it. And pros and cons for both. And she got back to me and she's like, you know what? That's not that terrible. Like, when we're looking at what's going on today with just all the atrocities and terribleness, she didn't actually think the thing that I thought of was that bad. Or rather, that's not quite, that, 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 that paints her in a callous light. Jen, if you're listening, I'm sorry. That's not entirely correct. Her reaction was that the governments would not try to hide it. They would accept that as a cost of whatever they were trying to get done. But they wouldn't think that the revelation of this secret would be devastating, which is what I was trying to base the book on. So I'm, I'm coming up with new terrible things. And I think I can do it. If I sit back and think, hey, this might need, you know, hard work. Not, what, it's not perfect the first time? Then I'll quit. And it, it, it sucks to say this. It's embarrassing to say this because I've been doing this podcast for so long. And I still need help with the basic, basic <laughs> messages. But that's why I keep doing it, because I think that if I'm having trouble keeping with the basic messages, maybe you are too. Yes, first drafts, first proposals are allowed to have flaws. And then you fix it on a rewrite. Say it a million times, maybe it'll sink in. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm working on a bunch of um, proposal stuff right now. Got a new novel proposal. I've got some novella proposals. I've got some interactive fiction proposals. So I feel like a ball that's that's balanced at the edge of a table. You know, when you were a kid and you learned about kinetic and potential energy. I'm very potential. All I need is someone to push the ball off the table and then I'm off and running. I mixed my metaphors there, but I trust you can come with me. But right now, I'm mainly just keeping track of uh, what I have working on the proposals and the fact that it's okay if they're not perfect. So, we have no feedback. If you have a question you would like to ask me, you can email mightymur at gmail.com and I will get to it. If you have a question for me and Matt over the Ditch Diggers podcast, just put Ditch Diggers in the subject line so we know which podcast you want me to answer it on. But I guess that's it for this time. I have to get over myself, remember that I too am flawed, no matter how I was raised as a gifted child. There's still stuff that can break. And that's okay. That's really, that's, that's the key to all of this. It's okay that the proposal comes back with some suggestions. It's okay. Brain weasels can calm down. It's okay. 
So, I told you my email address. The website is merverse.com. You can find out all about me and my writing there and my other podcast, Ditch Diggers. There are many ways you can subscribe to my various podcasts. iTunes is possibly the most popular, but I'm available on Spreaker, on Google Play. Um, gosh, there are so many. If you are a Ditch Diggers fan and you subscribe to the feed separately, you can subscribe to all of my podcasts via a main Mervers feed, but if you want to, sub if you subscribe to Ditch Diggers and it hasn't been updating, I apologize. That should be fixed by now. Um, I broke my site and therefore broke my feed. Sorry about that. I'm a professional. Been doing this for going on 13 years? 12 and a half. So, uh, yeah, still can break stuff. If you enjoy this podcast, you might like the book that's coming out based on it called I Should Be Writing. It's available for pre-order now, wherever books are sold, online, local bookstore, whatever. It'll be out in August. Pre-orders are very, very wonderful. If you want to support authors, pre-order their books because it makes their publishers really, really happy. So if you know you're going to get it, go ahead and pre-order it. But I have a little bit of an announcement to make. My publisher wants people to put reviews up about the book. Note that I'm not saying good, just they want people talking about the book. So the first 15 people to respond to this podcast at mightymer at gmail.com will receive a review copy of I Should Be Writing with the request to leave a Goodreads, Amazon, IndieBound, BNN, whatever review of the book. So if you would like a copy of, uh, I'm not sure if we're talking about physical or e-copies, but if you want a review copy of the book, email me. The first 15 people will get a copy. I'm pretty sure we can go worldwide on this. Just put a review copy in the subject line and, uh, I'll make an announcement when all 15 slots are filled. And I have some fiction out. Six Wakes. It was just featured in Popular Mechanics. Dude, how awesome is that? Popular Mechanics listed the best sci-fi book so far this year, and Six Wakes was on it. Woo! That was awesome. That was a big, uh, that was a big high-five booyah moment I had with Cameron Hurley and Cory Doctorow, because they, their books are on there, too. And I recommend them. Cameron Hurley has uh, The Stars of Legion and Cory Doctorow has Walkaways. Or is it just Walkaway? I can't remember. Little details. Anyway, I think that's all the announcements I have. I have to get back to work now, writing work and getting over myself and all that stuff. Um, but I will talk to you in two, around two weeks, maybe one, depending on when I get this up. But I will get back on my regular schedule. And remember, if you are going to Worldcon, I will be in Finland during that time and would love to meet up with people, so let me know. And that's it for me. I hope you're being productive this summer or this winter, if you are on the, in the Southern Hemisphere, because you should be writing. <laughs>